Hey guys, it's Alan. And Alec. From Revival. And we are having a little conversation about what we've learned about motorcycle wiring. It's true. It's true. <laughs> so, uh, Alec and I realized that there's a lot of education to be shared with the people that watch these videos. We've learned a lot about wiring. What's really happened is over the years of Revival, they've eclipsed me and my knowledge in what I used to know how to do and have now I come up and I talk to them and they end up educating me about the wiring they're doing and the steps they're taking. My own story is that I wired quite a few motorcycles myself and even car stuff and I could get stuff to work but it was always going to be ugly, it was never going to be efficient and I was still using old school technology and I mean stuff I bought from AutoZone and using fuses and fuse blocks that were universal and some really crappy materials. And what's happened in the genesis of Revival is that we've discovered things like the Moto Gadget line that everybody knows we sell. Uh, we've discovered uh, much better wiring materials, much better connections, even better zip ties. And what Alec and I wanted to do is kind of have a conversation where we share some of that with you. So first thing I would ask, what happened when you started learning about wiring? Were you intimidated? You know, I wasn't in the world of making custom wiring harnesses or, you know, so yeah, yeah. You know, it was more of using stock things or upgrades here and there, you right. know, as far as components, electrical components, but not actual wiring and wires themselves. And so you might have to like hook up a new horn or put in some headlights or maybe yeah, a relay a for a radio or new something. New charging system, maybe, yeah, maybe. stuff like that. A new that. alternator. Yeah, just exactly. Plugged in, right? You know, nothing to the effect that we do now. So yeah, when I when I first came in, that was one of the things that you were like, "How do you feel about wiring?" Because we do a lot of it. We do a lot of it, and I'm like, "Yeah, it sounds great." And in my head, I'm like. <laughs> That yeah. sounds kind of great. And, and then you've soaked it up from multiple people that, are, that were more experienced with it. Absolutely. But also we've just been kind of learning a, in a co-op experience. So versus you know, then, which was what, five, six years ago, how do you feel about when you're going to wire a motorcycle now? Even the most, you know, like the most complex fuel injection bikes we do. I feel good about it. I look forward to it. It's kind of like a meditative, therapeutic thing. I mean, I guess that's working on motorcycles in general, but it's not really wiring. problem solving, it's yeah. creating something from scratch. scratch. Stringing these components together in the most elegant and efficient way. Wiring in general, it's like chess. You've got to think around 10 different corners and plan for those issues at the beginning. So let me ask you this, the M unit, mm -hmm. you still like it? I do, I like it a lot. I think it's, uh, I think it's definitely worthwhile. Now that depends, right? Right. Something like this, for example, this was getting all the bells and whistles, you know, lights, turn signals, horn. I mean, we're refinishing the frame. We've, we can put new mounting points in. But I mean, like, going backwards. So if you just wanted to put bar and turn signals like these on, mm -hmm. right, you don't really necessarily need a new wiring harness, right? Because if your bike is already reliable and your charging system works and all your lights are pretty good, you might just want to wire in a new bar and turn signal. Well, you don't need an M unit for that. No. Right? And people don't realize... We sell M units, but that's only for people that really need to just reassess the entire the entire redesign, thing. Yeah, entire you system. don't. I mean, in my opinion, you know, if you're building something super minimal like a chopper or a cafe racer, or just something that has a headlight and a tail light, like you don't really need the M unit because you're just you're overdoing it, right? But even then, like break down simplistically from your perspective, if you're going to put a bar and turn signal. What is it you know now that you didn't know years ago regarding the wiring and how that's going to come? That's a lot more simple, a lot simpler than I thought. Right. Especially now, of course, we can get into LEDs versus incandescent bulbs and resistors and all that stuff because, as people probably know, you want to put LED turn signals on your bike and your bike's not set up for it, they blink fast, right? Because of how the controller works. Exactly. Like the relay. You know, if you want to do something as simple as upgrading your lighting, you may not need to rewire your whole motorcycle, but there's still some subtleties to doing that. Then we get into charging systems. So obviously you've got a multiple components of a charging system. You've got a battery, you've got a regular rectifier, and you've got either an alternator or generator. And how those three components work together to make sure the battery is charged, to make sure that the alternator is charging, and then of course the regular rectifier that is taking that energy and turning it into something that's useful for the battery and also turning it off and on as needed. What you've learned about that is modern components are better. One of the things that I tell people is like, you know, you don't have to fight your charging system, like, especially on an old bike, like, and now they make so many, like, so many upgrades for it, so many good, reliable things that are... Well, when I think about it, I think about the hours I spent with a, with a multimeter trying to check the charging system at idle and at rev, 
and not, not even really knowing if I was getting it right or if it was within spec. My Moto Guzzi specifically, that old Magneti Morelli charging system, never worked right, and my battery was always dead. Those are notorious for yeah, that. Yeah, and I was leaving things on a battery tender for a reason now, in hindsight, I had a giant battery, and if that was charged up, I could ride it for hours. Right, but if it wasn't charged up, I was dead in the water because the charging system was so, so weak. And then you get into the other issues with old wiring systems, and that is they've started to wear because of where they attach to a frame or different components. But there's other things to deal with, which is you'll end up with a short because of where the wiring has rubbed onto a different component, and that needs to be traced back and figured out. You'll blow a fuse, is it the plug? Is it the wire? Is it the component? You have to figure out which one it is of the three. And what Alec has learned is, we're using much better wire with better insulation that's much more durable, that's fuel resistant, that's sun resistant, and of course vibration resistant. And then he's using better shrink wrap, he's using better tape, he's using better zip ties and attachment points, he's using more secure screws that aren't gonna come loose. And then there, of course there's the plugs and there's a male and female version of a plug. Plugs are a lot better than they were 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, even the connectors that we use are made for withstanding heat and, and we're voltage. Talking about, and we're talking about a couple dollars. Just to really upgrade it. The, the, now it's gonna be completely waterproof, so condensation, all the other things aren't going to matter so much, and it's gonna last all longer. Ignition systems. Man, now we've got ignition systems that aren't just using points that are archaic and analog at best. We've got ignition systems that are optically red. Yes, that means they're using a laser mm -hmm. to sense where the crank in, in its position, the firing order is, and send out the perfect spark. We've got much better coils that are much more powerful, much more efficient, use less energy. Well, yeah, there's all that whole thing like, man, my, my bike's not, put some points back on it, people always say, my bike's not right. Points are more point. reliable. Yeah, and then the only thing about points is, um, they work just fine, but you have to check them, you have to do regular maintenance on them, right? Because they're a wearable item. That's the only problem really with points. I mean, they create fine spark and all that good stuff. I've heard people say though, like, oh, well, you know, first time electronic ignition box goes out, you're gonna be screwed and with points, if I'm on the side of the road, I can at least repair it. Yeah, if you carry around an extra set of points, it's quite simpler to repair it, but the electronic ignition should have a lifetime, a life duty cycle that is exponentially longer than an engine could ever last. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're absolutely reliable. And, and 20 years ago, sorry, Boyer, but the Boyer ignition boxes, were a common failure point. You'd buy this, you know, for your Triumph, a vintage Triumph, you buy a Boyer ignition, that was three or 400 bucks, which seemed like a lot of money at the time. And the occasion of the box would just die. And you send it to Boyer and they'd send you another one. You'd be on the side of the road, stranded, and they're right. But today, that's not the same. Yeah, that's there are the, many options. I bet you the Boyer never fails any longer. Yeah. You'd like, if they're even still in business, I don't even know. But, you know, the ignition, the C5 ignition C5, systems. C5, and even these vape the ignitions, vape like systems. they make these for BMWs and Gootsies and some British bikes, and it's basically a charging system and an ignition system, like, all in one. It gets rid of a lot of the clutter up there, too, so. Uh, more, so many yeah, I'm, I'm moving on because I remember other things too, right? Like, so the difference between incandescent and LED. LED lights are more reliable. They last a lot longer. Their life cycle is much, much longer. They're vibration resistant and they use less power, right? All of these things are really great, specifically with an old bike, but with any bike, they're brighter too. Like, there's no drawback to an LED bulb. Then let's talk about uh, switch gear and instrumentation. Oh, man. First of all, switch gear. Modern switches, even to this day, when you buy a factory original, brand new BMW Moto Guzzi, sorry guys, but it's true, they're putting cheap, full load capacity switches at your fingertips for a reason. It's cheap. Yep. Are they better than the switches from the 70s? Sure, but they're still, they're still mass produced, very inexpensive. And it, what comes with full load switches is a big, larger chunk of wiring that has to go through all the way up to the handlebars. It has to go all the way back to all lights. You've got much larger, heavier wire. That's a bigger failure point because also it's plastic. Yep. All that stuff is generally plastic. Sometimes it's you see attractive. a metal switch, but most all, yeah, it's plastic. And in, in the sun, it's gonna fail. It's eventually gonna fade, it's gonna fall apart, it's gonna become brittle, and it's gonna have to be replaced. If you replace your switch gear with modern, waterproof metal switches, they're gonna outlast the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And not to mention the fact that they look good. <laughs> and they look cool and they and feel cool. Yeah, and if you're gonna, you know, build something custom or make it cool, like that's the, those are the first things that people wanna get rid of, right? All the bulky stuff at the bars and go with something smaller and better. Instrumentation, right? Yeah. Modern gauges. Man. Why are modern gauges better? That's a long conversation in and of itself. <laughs> Uh, they have a lot more functions on them, for one. Oh, right? that's one. Especially yeah. on a vintage bike. I mean, you've got, depending on what your bike can do, but yeah. oil pressure, uh, temperature. oil temperature. You know, tell you the temperature outside. Yeah, ambient yeah. temperature, yeah. you know. Peak voltage, low voltage, you know, it gives you warning lights. And these are all things that they do with old bikes. If you, 
all, all the capabilities of these new gauges are, in some ways, they surpass like what the bike can even do. It'll take a deep dive to explain the complexities of upgrading uh, instrumentation, but uh, instrumentation is an important part. You know, we'll get deeper into what to look out for or what you want to do as far as completely rewiring your motorcycle. And even if you don't want to completely rewire your motorcycle, maybe you just want to add some things here there, get rid of some stuff, you know. There are definitely some do's and don'ts and the right way to do things. Now, of course, we're always learning, right? So what I know today, I may know a lot more about it tomorrow or next year, but the knowledge that we have now is, you know, yeah. better than we've ever had. And, and the understanding of how everything should work and the, I already said do's and don'ts, but even the yeah. shortcuts or things to look out for, because if there is one thing that I've learned from doing wiring, like you covered a second ago, is thinking 10 steps ahead, because if you don't, you just kind of got to start all over. It's just kind of like a chain reaction of things. You know? The point of what we're talking about here is we're about to break down into smaller edible chunks of wiring and upgrading the wiring system on your bike. We're going to teach you how to troubleshoot wiring problems with your bike. We're going to teach you about modern components and what to use. We're going to teach you about modern materials. We're going to teach you about modern switch gear. We're going to teach you about modern instrumentation. We're going to teach you about modern lighting. And we're just going to teach you how to be better at understanding what's making this motorcycle work and where electricity flows all throughout the entire machine. Stay tuned. Now it's time of video where most people ask for money or donations or whatever. I'm not going to ask you for that. What I'm going to say to you is, if you want to see more videos and you want to learn more of what we've learned, and you want to see a deep dive into a lot of these topics, go to our website and buy something. We sell everything from motorcycle gear, helmets, uh, motorcycle parts, specialized tools. We sell lots of things and they've all taken us years to figure out what the best stuff is and we figured it out. So go to revivalcycles.com. There's some really good stuff there. Everything from like kick-ass hand grips from Posh to Radiance LED lighting and everything in between. We want to teach you what we know, but this stuff takes time and it takes real effort to make these videos and make them good for you guys. So go support us by helping yourself to the cool stuff you already need. And it helps us because we make a little bit of profit and then we can justify doing more videos. Thanks for your support.